Good morning. Uh, it is Wednesday, the 16th of March, 2022, Wednesday in the week of the second Sunday of Lent. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer. According to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662, we're here to render thanks, therefore, to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, Open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The one whose worship uh, to, we are called to, let us also heed his word. The Psalms for the 16th day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 439. They are Psalms 79, 80, and 81. 79 is a lamentation over the fall of Jerusalem, its destruction, and a prayer for God to restore it. And of course, this is really a prayer for, uh, in New Testament terms, for the restoration of the church uh, from the ravages uh, that have, that have corruptions uh, and 
that have fall, come upon it due to its uh, sins and especially its unfaithfulness. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled and made Jerusalem a heap of stones. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the air, and the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the land. Their blood have they shed like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no man to bury them. We are become an open shame to our enemies, very scorn and derision unto them that are round about us. Lord, how long wilt thou be angry? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire for ever? Pour out thine indignation upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not our old sins, but have mercy upon us and that soon, for we are come to great misery. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O oh, deliver us, and be merciful unto our sins, for thy name's sake. Wherefore do the heathen say, Where is now their God? O oh, let the vengeance of the servant's blood that is shed be openly showed in the sight of the heathen. O oh, let the sorrowful sighing of the prisoners come before thee, according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And for the blasphemy wherewith our neighbors have blasphemed thee, Reward thou them, O Lord, sevenfold into their bosom. So we that are thy people and sheep of thy pasture shall give thee thanks for ever, and shall always be showing forth thy praise from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 80 is very similar in theme, a lament for the destruction of Jerusalem, a prayer for God to restore it, uh, the opening verses of language uh, that marks this out as a hymn, uh, a psalm especially of the Advent. Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, show thyself also, thou that sittest upon the cherubim. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and help us. Turn us in, O God, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry with thy people that prayeth? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them plenteousness of tears to drink. Thou hast made us a very strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, thou God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou madest room for it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedar trees. She stretched out her branches unto the sea, and her boughs unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedge, that all they that go by pluck off her grapes? The wild boar out of the wood doth root it up, and the wild beasts of the field devour it. Turn thee again, thou God of hosts, look, look down from heaven. Behold and visit this vine, and the place of the vineyard that thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest so strong for thyself. It is burnt with fire and cut down, and they shall perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. And now a messianic or Christological prayer. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, and upon the son of man whom thou madest so strong for thine own self. And so will not we go back from thee, O let us live, and we shall call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The restoration of the church requires uh, the very conversion of our souls to God, which is itself the work of God for which we pray. Psalm 81, a summons to festal commemoration of God's uh, mighty acts of salvation and a challenge from God to the obedience that we owe him in return. Sing we merrily unto God our strength, make a cheerful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take the psalm, bring hither the tabret, the merry harp with the lute. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, even in the time appointed and upon our solemn feast day. For this was made a statute for Israel, 
and the law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he came out of the land of Egypt and had heard a strange language. I eased his shoulder from the burden, and his hands were delivered from making the pots. Thou calledst upon me in trouble, and I delivered thee, and heard thee what time as the storm fell upon thee. I proved thee also at the waters of strife. Hear, O my people, and I will assure thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange god be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any other god. I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and let them follow their own imaginations. Oh, that my people would have hearkened unto me. For if Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have put down their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured for ever. I would have fed them also with the finest wheat flour, and with honey out of the stony rock would I have satisfied thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we begin at the eighth verse of the seventh chapter of the first, second book of Moses called Exodus. And here we see the uh, contest, the conflict between God and Egypt, between Moses and Pharaoh is escalating, beginning to escalate. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning, lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. So here's the very life-giving source of Egypt being struck. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, and upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up his, the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river returned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, but they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river. O ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. 
O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frosts, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Uh, John's Gospel uh, precedes, uh, begins as Matthew, Mark, and Luke does with the baptism of John, but then proceeds in a very different fashion. Here we do hear of his first miracle, um, unattested in the other Gospels, uh, very significantly it takes place at a wedding and therefore uh, uh, reminds us of the uh, mystical union, the marriage of God and Israel, of God and the soul, uh, which is Christ has come to fulfill in his own person, the mystical union of Christ in his church. And then uh, we have the cleansing of the temple. Again, um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke speak of this as something that happens near the end of his ministry on earth. Um, John indicates that it ha may have happened also near the beginning. In the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the boat marriage. And when they wanted wine, the wine had run out, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come, the hour indeed of his passion. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Excellent advice. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, a very large number, multiple gallons. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well dunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. After this he went down to Capernaum, this is a town on the Sea of Galilee, which seems to become uh, his base in the Galilee mission. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 
Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Christ, the bridegroom, come to claim his bride, to change uh, the water of our nature uh, into, the, by the wine, uh, into the wine of his grace um, to uh, bring to fulfillment uh, what we have failed to do in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, the consummation of the covenant, the fulfillment of God's promises, uh, the coming of his kingdom. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What we've heard with our lips, let us believe with our hearts, and con what we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts, and confess with our lips, as we recite the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other and those we love, and the whole church and people of God, to his gracious and watchful care. And in the unity of the body of Christ, um, we pray with and for and on behalf of and in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Bid your prayers for um, all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's Holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by his good spirit, that all those who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries in their peace, order, and good government, the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression, especially for the people and lawful government of Ukraine, for their protection and deliverance from the malice and cruelty of their enemies, the courage with which they fight, and for the arms to fight effectively. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for their fruitfulness and good works, um, and especially for um, the churches of Ukraine and Russia. I bid your prayers for the confirmation classes, both adult and youth here at St. John's, that they, through instruction and exhortation, they may be stirred up to a lively faith of their own. 
bid your prayers for all Christian families in the ministry of Christian parenting, that they may raise up their children in the faith and fear of the Lord. Bid your prayers for all those who suffer in mind, body, or state. Uh, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers for the orphans, the abandoned, the abused, the hungry, the homeless, refugees and captives, the wounded and the dying. Bid your prayers for all women in childbirth, all newborns and their parents, all women expecting children and the children they're expecting. Bid your prayers for those uh, dealing with cancer and therapies, undergoing surgery or recovering from it. For those suffering from cognitive impairment, debilitating infirmities such as Parkinson's disease, uh, chronic pain, um, uh, the challenge of sobriety, mental illness, depression. Bid your prayers for caregivers and health care workers. And for those who are grieving. And for charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, that we with them, that they may rest in peace, and that we with them may rise to glory. I bid your prayers that we may keep a holy Lent in fasting and abstinence, and prayer and self and uh, giving of alms, and that being today, that being under the protection of um, the divine mercy and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do and be renewed in the likeness of his Son, that when he comes again in glory, we may greet him in joy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect for peace in special solidarity with the people of Ukraine. A God who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On what possible basis can we ask God to forgive us our sins? You know, we can't ask him to forgive our sins because we're such good people. Uh, on what possible basis can we claim forgiveness of his mercy, to be sure? Um, 
but is there anything else than which his mercy, can, he can be moved to that mercy? Mercy is what we're seeking. Uh, what's the basis for him to extend mercy? Well, Psalm 79 gives us the reason. Oh, remember not our old sins, but have mercy upon us and that soon, for we are come to great misery. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O deliver us and be merciful unto our sins, for thy name's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? Hallowed be thy name. God's name is hallowed, glorified, uh, made great, when uh, for his own sake he extends his mercy to us, forgives us our sins, and restores us to himself. That's a wonderful prayer for our Lenten time. Verse 9 of Psalm 79. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O deliver us and be merciful unto thy sins, for thy name's sake. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his perfect will.